2010, I went to an artist residency at Yaddo. But as it came closer to the residency, I often would buy a new instrument or a new camera when I'm going into a new situation in order to mix up the kind of work that might come out of it. So I just bought the telescope, then I took a digital camera. It was the first project I ever tried with a digital camera. When I put the, the camera on the telescope and started shooting, what it turned out was that I was photographing all kinds of light that was bouncing inside the telescope. And this happened particularly when I was taking images of the sun. It's so bright outside when you're looking into the back of a digital camera, you really can't see anything. And it was only when I got back into my studio and downloaded the footage that I realized all the artifacts that I was seeing in the image were actually light bouncing around the inside of the telescope. And um, when a viewer is looking at the image, they would never know what they were looking at unless I inserted the time date stamp in there. The time date stamp sort of alerts the viewer that what's being recorded is not the motion of the moon, is not the motion of the physical object the telescope is recording, but it's really turning the vision back inward on the telescope and um, foregrounding the process of perception of um, recording and looking and then recording and looking and recording and looking at the moon and it kind of becomes this play on what is the idealized version of the moon and how do we know the moon we have to rely on this process of cognition that um, tries to understand what the physical object is that it's seeing and I love the telescope and the camera as this mediating instrument between that activity So in the Moon Studies and Star Scratches series, I started in 2003 and it was a really long project, went until 2004. And the reason why it took so long to do this is because what I would do is go out with um, a medium format camera, either an 8x10 or a 4x5, and with sheets of transparency film and photograph the image over and over again. So this image that we're looking at here was made from June 2004 to September 2004. And every time I would go out, I would photograph the moon and then move the camera and photograph again. I would make the back of the camera horizontal and some of it vertical. And I really wanted to get at an image that wasn't simply a scientific look at what the physical phenomenon was that was happening, but I wanted to see, I wanted the record to be a combination of the movements of the moon and the movements of the camera and the photographer to change what the record of a photograph actually can be and actually can mean. At a certain point in photography, I started to work against my training and expectations just to see what photography could do. I found there was a strange contradiction in photography in that 
there's a very prescribed idea of what a photograph can be and how it should be presented in the art world and our sort of social cultural understanding of photography. And then it seems to be this wide open medium that can do anything and everything. And I found that it could be very surprising, the results in photography. So I started to work more experimentally, and I think for the last 15 or 20 years I've been going to artist residencies or to places that I haven't seen before in order to um, respond and arrive at unpredictable images that um, show me something I couldn't know before. So there's an image from the Harvard Observatory in about 1850 by John Whipple. That's a collaboration between John Whipple and another scientist that was taken of the moon. It's a daguerreotype. It's a beautiful image. And that kind of imagery is something that I find really inspiring because at that moment in photography, there were no expectations of how the medium could be used. And there were no rules about how to make a photograph or what to expect in a photograph. And I find that our situation today is almost exactly reversed, that we have a lot of expectations and notions of how photography can be used, but we don't really tap into how wide open and how um, expansive the medium is as a mode of expression. Mm -hmm.